late. I just, just got back from Kansas. You know, I feel like I've been driving for days. You know how many Louisvilles there are in this country? It's crazy. Anyway, you know, I haven't had a chance to uh, clean my bike up yet. It's, it's filthy. So maybe, uh, maybe we should give it a wash before we start. I'll meet you inside. Bruce in the Pro's Closet, and today I'm giving you the breakdown on this 2022 Orbea Terra. Now, you probably just watched the pretty cool bike washing montage, but holy crap, it took me about an hour to wash all the mud and crap off this bike. And I didn't even get it all. There's still a lot. It's gonna be on this bike forever, but it's as good as I'm gonna get it. The reason my bike was so dirty, though, is because I raced it at this year's Unbound Gravel. Now, if you don't know, Unbound Gravel is the world's premier gravel race. It covers 200 miles, starts in Emporia, Kansas, and man, it is hard. And it was especially hard this year because some thunderstorms hit us and they turned the whole last half of the course into a mud pit, pretty much. So um, I'm gonna have my man Chris cut in some of the footage I got from the race and you can watch it right now. How do you feel, Bruce? Uh, gosh. It's, I'm cramping everywhere. <laughs> As you can tell, it was pretty tough. I've actually never ridden 200 miles before in my life, so it was kind of unknown territory for me. I didn't know how my body was gonna react. I'm cramping everywhere. If I was even gonna finish. Uh oh. I set a pretty conservative goal of finishing in 13 hours because I was born on Friday the 13th. It's my lucky number. And I actually managed to do it. I squeaked in just under with a finish time of 12 hours, 56 minutes, and 30 seconds. Now that is about three hours after the pros, but hey, I'm a lot fatter, a lot slower. My training wasn't very consistent, so I am proud of myself. And the reason I was able to achieve my goal was because of my equipment. So let's get into that. So a lot of you probably know about Orbea already. And if you don't, you probably should. Orbea is one of the oldest bike manufacturers still making bikes. They've been making bikes since 1920, over 100 years ago. They're not the oldest, that's Bianchi, who've been making bikes since 1885, but Orbea has actually been around longer. Back in 1840 is when they started, and they were making handguns. Now, the reason they switched to bikes is in the early 1900s, 
gun laws were getting more restrictive, so they had to pivot. And since they already had the expertise, you know, with steel tubes and everything, they decided to make bikes and baby carriages. Now, luckily, bikes are what stuck because right now they make some of the coolest, most modern, and I think best looking bikes on the market. This Orbea Terra is a great example. This one is the M21 Team One by. It was first released back in 2017. And you know, in the last five years, gravel riding has changed a lot. So the Terra has had to change to keep up with the times. And it was completely redesigned for 2022. It's got an OMR carbon frame, an OMX carbon fork, and you know, it's light and snappy and compliant. Everything you expect from a good carbon gravel frame. The major updates they made were to the geometry, to the tire clearance. It can clear 45 millimeter, 700C tires now. And then they also added in-frame storage. Now the geometry has been tweaked and the big news is that it is longer, it has longer reach, and it's got a shorter stem and a lower bottom bracket. Now, if you're a mountain biker, you're probably already familiar with these sort of tweaks. You know, longer and lower gives you more stability off-road. And it works, because I actually love the way this bike descends. When I was riding in Unbound, I was able to just fly down all the descents. I actually used it to my advantage. I gapped the groups I was with and let them catch up later. Made my life a lot easier. It was great. The other thing they've done with the geometry is they've shortened the chain stays. Now they're 420 millimeters. Nice. And it keeps the rear end nice and snappy. And then they've also made the seat tube shorter on all models. And the reason they did that is because it exposes more seat posts. Now, not only does that look good, you gotta have exposed seat posts, but it gives you more compliance because having more seat posts exposed, or Bea says, increases the deflection of the rear end by 8%. And I believe it, my rear end, you know, after the race, it wasn't great, but it wasn't too bad. I was able to ride the next day. So I think it's pretty darn comfortable. One of the new features I really liked was this in-frame storage. Orbea calls this locker. Now it's spelled without an E, like an iPhone app. So you know, it's pretty hip. But what it is, is essentially this entire down tube is hollow and it's pretty easy to access. You just flip this lever up, oh, it's muddy. And then you can pull this out and you have all this storage space in here. You can see on the back side of the door is this little rubber band. Now this is usually for holding CO2s, but for unbound, I used it to hold my tire plugs. And the reason I put them there is because I figured, you know, if I punctured, this would be the fastest place for me to access my plugs and of course, you know, I had a plug pre-threaded right there, ready for anything, but you'll see, didn't use it. More on that later. Now, you can pretty much fit as much as you can inside this down tube. I've got two tubes, two tire levers. I did have my hand pump in there also, but I took it out uh, before I washed the bike. And, you know, it's crazy. It does come with a little bag to keep things organized stop it from rattling around. And it's useful too, because I did manage to lose the tire levers down near the bottom bracket. And if you've ever like dropped a pick inside of a guitar. Let's see if this will work. Just like that. The way I got them out is I flipped the bike upside down and shook it around. You know, if I was a little smarter, I would have used this little axis hatch they actually included in the bottom there. I didn't notice it until it was too late. But you know, Overall, I'm pretty stoked on having this sort of storage system. Specialized and Trek are the only other two brands that really offer something like this on a drop bar bike. But I think in the near future, we're gonna see a lot more bike companies offering this, which is pretty exciting. Now, of course, since this is the team one by model, it's got a one by drivetrain. In this case, it has the SRAM Force Axis Explorer drivetrain. What it is is a 40 tooth chain ring with a 12 speed cassette that is 10 to 44 tooth. This gearing was pretty much perfect for me. Um, I don't think I could run anything harder. I never spun out and the 40-44 combo was just enough for me to make it up all the super steep hills in the last half of the course when I was totally blown. Um, the pros, obviously they push a harder gear, but you know, for the normal rider, I think it's perfect. And 
you know, it's electronic, it's wireless, and I was stoked. You know, the race is pretty tough, and it takes a lot less effort to shift an electronic drivetrain. So I ended up shifting a lot more than I normally do, which made me more efficient, I think. And then also, when the uh, drivetrain was caked in mud, it just kept working. I never lost gears, I never misshifted. You know, electronic drivetrains are super reliable, especially in bad conditions. So I think if you're a gravel racer and you can afford it, it's definitely worth springing for something like Axis or DI2. Now, it's more expensive and you do have to remember to keep it charged. I did forget a couple times, which sucked. But, you know, overall I was super happy. And then also I wanna mention one of the major reasons my drivetrain works so well too is the lube I used. Maybe you noticed this before I washed my bike, the cleanest part was actually the chain. And that's because in the last year I've become kind of a chain waxing zealot, I guess. You know, I'm super into, you know, immersion waxing. I think it's probably the best way to lube your chain, even though it's a little extra work. But recently I switched to a new product and that's Silka's super secret chain coating. Now, it's not a wax-based lube, it is a wax chain coating. And you do have to remove all the factory lube or old lube from your chain and completely strip it before you apply it. But once you do, I think it works just as well as an immersion wax. Um, I've been able to get about 500 miles between applications. I'm not saying you should do that, that's just what I've done. Um, and it pretty much lasted the distance of Unbound. Even in the super muddy conditions, it did get pretty squeaky at the end. I think if it was dry, it would have easily gone the distance and more. So I highly recommend it. And you know, I think it's the best there is. Now the last major thing I wanna talk about is the thing that all the gravel nerds really care about. And that's my wheel and tire setup. Now the Terra M21 team comes with Fulcrum Rapid Red wheels. Now these are aluminum gravel wheels. They have a 23 millimeter internal width. I think 23 to 25 millimeters is pretty much perfect for wide gravel tires. And you do have the option to upgrade to uh, Vision carbon wheels, but I didn't really have the time or money, so this is what I ran. And actually, you know, they worked great for Unbound. I rimmed out a lot, and you know, usually I'd be freaked out, but with the aluminum wheels, I just kind of didn't care, and that was pretty liberating. Now one thing that helped with me rimming out a lot, and you might have noticed, you will see I have these flashy green tubeless valves in these wheels. That's right, I've got Kush Cores installed. Now I've been using Kush Core for years on my mountain bikes. I use Kush Core Pro in my enduro bike, Kush Core XC in my XC bike, and now finally I've put Kush Core Gravel in my gravel bike. It took me a while to actually commit to using Kush Cores in my gravel bike, because I am still a bit of a weight weenie, and uh, they do add 110 grams per wheel, which is kind of a lot, but holy crap, it was so worth it. You know, they add a lot of damping and comfort to your tires, so it really helped over a 200 mile day, and then they also protect your rim, of course, and prevent pinch flats. Now, all the water crossings at Unbound, they have these absurd holes or sniper rocks just hidden in them. So it was super easy to puncture. I saw a lot of riders flatting after water crossings and having to fix their bikes. Me, I had zero punctures, which is pretty crazy. I was absolutely stoked. And I'll be honest, I really didn't notice the extra weight of the Kush cores. I think Unbound, it doesn't really have extended climbs. So the extra weight really isn't that important. And it was, totally worth it for the comfort, for the protection. You know, the other half of that no puncture equation is the tires I ran. These are Challenge Getaways. Challenge is probably better known for their cyclocross tires, but now they have a couple of cool gravel models. The Getaway is a 40 millimeter wide tire. And what makes Challenge tires really special is that they're handmade. Now I have one right here. Now you can see, because it's a handmade tire, it is really, really supple. And actually like, when it's not mounted on the rim, it lays pretty much perfectly flat and no other tire really does that. Now the good thing about a supple tire is that 
especially on rough terrain, it rolls faster and it provides more traction and more comfort. It was pretty weird the first time I rode these tires. Because they're so supple, you actually have to ride them about five or six PSI higher than you do most other tires. Um, I ran my tires with 40 PSI in the front, 43 in the rear, and that felt about perfect. I'm about 180 pounds. And, you know, supple tires, they don't mean flimsy. Now, these use a double layer of challenges, and I'm going to say this and make it sound Italian, but I don't actually know if it's how you say it. Corazza, bead to bead armor. And you got two layers of that, and then under the tread, you also have their ganso. Some Italian can correct me on my pronunciation, I'm sorry, but you've got puncture protection under the tread also. So definitely, after no punctures over the entire race, I think it works pretty well. There is one caveat, you know, these are the most difficult gravel tire I've ever had to mount on a wheel. The beads are just insanely tight, and then the supple casing doesn't help either. It makes it kind of floppy and hard to get on the rim. You know, be ready for that if you're gonna try them. Um, I, I, the Challenge does make like a tire mounting tool. It's essentially a bead jack. I didn't use one, I used a better tool. His name is Doug, he's one of our line technicians. Doug, me, and four tire levers, we were able to just muscle it on. So thanks a lot, Doug. If you're a tire nerd like me, you probably spend time on bicyclerollingresistance.com. And these tires tested really well in terms of rolling resistance and puncture protection. And actually, it's one of the few tires I've seen get a five out of five rating, which is why I wanted to try them. And I think I'm gonna run them for the foreseeable future. I'm just stoked on them. Just, it's the initial mounting. That's the only problem. So I said earlier that the Terra can fit 45 millimeter tires. The reason I didn't go to 45 millimeters is because I kind of looked at the forecast and saw that it was gonna rain and mud was expected. So I did want the extra clearance for the mud. Ultimately, I think I made a great choice because the Challenge tires with the Kush cores gave me a lot of traction and I was able to ride some of the really bad mud pits that a lot of people were walking. I pretty much only got off to run twice and I'm like super stoked with how I was able to get through it. And I think the tires were a big component of that. Now, as a race bike, I think the Terra was just about perfect. I say just about because I do have a few nitpicks with the frame. Um, I own a lot of bolt on top tube bags and unfortunately the Terra does not have bolts on the top tube to mount those. Now, I could get a Velcro on top tube bag, but I didn't feel like buying one, so I ended up doing the whole race with all my food stuffed in my pockets, which was fine. Now, the Terra is like a very racy bike. Orbea sort of bills it as a gravel bike for roadies, so it's probably why they didn't add mounts there. Um, not the biggest deal. Doesn't really matter that much in the grand scheme of things, but something to consider, you know, especially if you're doing ultra distance stuff. The other thing I wasn't quite sure about is this cable routing. You know, it routes in front of the headset, so it's not the worst that I've seen. It's still pretty easy to change the stem out, change the cockpit, you know, sort of height, whatever, and adjust those things. So, I don't know. Mess with it. I, I don't think it's the worst, but I always like, you know, more normal routing. That's just personal. And then the final thing that I sort of you know, was not into is these Euro wheels, man. They always have super quiet hubs. I can barely hear it. How are you supposed to flex on people if they can't tell you're coasting? <laughs> I mean, maybe it's just because I grew up putting fart cans on Honda Civics. But I love a really loud hub. Give me something American like an i9 and listen to this hub. Oh yeah, that's what I like. Ultimately, the Orbea Terra was super solid. It helped me ride 200 miles. Maybe it could help you ride 200 miles. If you're interested in Orbeas, we've got tons of them at theprosecloset.com, so make sure you check it out. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Hey Bruce, you just finished Unbound Gravel. What are you gonna do now? Go to Disneyland. <laughs>
I'm gonna lay down first. Okay. <laughs>